Today on Paul's Old Crap, we're going to take a tour of the hardware and software which make up the Wang Professional Computer and also discuss how the system differs from a traditional IBM PC. Before we jump into the hardware tour, let's talk a bit about Wang Laboratories. Wang was founded back in the 1950s, so by the time the Wang Professional Computer was released in 1983, the company had been around for some time. Their earlier products included things like calculators and word processors, and in the 1970s they were already making some computer products including the Wang VS line. Instead of trying to be compatible with IBM systems, Wang apparently decided they could compete on the same level and systems such as the Wang Professional Computer were not compatible with IBM at the hardware level. They eventually realized this was a stupid idea, and later Wang computers were made to be compatible. Unfortunately for Wang, the company suffered from management issues throughout the 1980s, leading to them filing for bankruptcy protection in 1992, and by the early 2000s there was really nothing left of the Wang brand. Now let's jump into a tour of the Wang Professional Computer. So for some background information on this particular system, I purchased it last year from a guy who was unloading his entire vintage Mac collection, and he just so happened to have this machine as well. Uh, I wasn't immediately interested in it for myself, um, but a friend of mine wanted it, so I'm currently holding it, waiting for them to pick up. Uh, I'm assuming this thing was probably stored in uh, like a shipping container for years or something like that. It's a little bit dirty, but uh, otherwise it seems to be okay. And um, yeah, as you can see, the Wang is quite large and it barely fits in my work area. So if we take a look at what you would need in order to have a working Wang PC setup, uh, we do have the computer itself obviously down here. Uh, we do also need the matching keyboard and the matching monitor. Now the keyboard, I don't know if this is compatible with the IBM XT or AT, but the plug does look like that type of plug. It's this round one here. Uh, I haven't tried this on any other systems, so I don't know if that is fully compatible. Uh, the monitor, though, it uses these strange round plugs here. Uh, one of them carries the power, and the other carries the data signal, as far as I know. And the monitor itself, uh, this one here is monochrome, and it's got uh, green color text. Uh, CGA was an option for this system, but I don't have that hardware. So when you look at these plugs on here, uh, it's pretty obvious that you need to have the monitor working as well as the computer in order to have a functioning setup. Uh, I don't believe you're going to find any sort of adapter or anything like that to use a modern monitor on this system. So without both of these pieces in the matching combination, your computer is probably going to be useless. Now, if we take a look at what sort of drives are available on this system, I think this is a pretty much a standard combination. Uh, although there is a lot of space in here, you only actually get one drive per bay, uh, even though it looks like you could probably fit two uh, drives physically in this space. Uh, but anyway, so over here we do have a five and a quarter inch floppy disk drive. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, this is a 1.2 megabyte uh, compatible drive. And over on this side, we have the Winchester, although most people probably know it as a standard hard drive. Now, if you're wondering why this is called a Winchester, the answer is guns. But we'll probably get into that in a future video. So taking a look at the rear of the unit, this is basically where all of the expansion is, as well as the motherboard, I believe. It's kind of a very compact card, is what it looks like, but I suppose we'll find more about that when we uh, open this unit up. Uh, but starting right up at the top here, uh, this first card, it says Winchester controller. So this is basically where the hard drive plugs into, and Winchester, as we mentioned previously, is the other name for hard drive that they were using during this time. Uh, below that, it looks like we do have three vacant slots, um, otherwise I'm sure we would see some indication of what's in there. So nothing eventful there. Um, but down here we do have the IBM Mono Emulation. Now this is where the actual monitor plugs into, and I believe this module is also responsible for making this system run traditional uh, PC compatible software. Uh, because at the hardware level, this thing is not IBM compatible. Uh, this uses an, uh, the Intel 8086 processor, which I believe is a 16-bit processor on like an 8-bit bus or something like that. 
Uh, it runs DOS, but at the time, all of the software that was made for like PC compatibles, I think was made for like the 8088. So this thing would not be able to run it without being modified specifically for the Wang. And I think this module was designed um, to kind of get around that. Um, it's, I think it's kind of strange that this is where the monitor also plugs into, because I mean, without this emulation board, uh, you wouldn't be able to use a monitor, and then I don't know what you'd even do with this thing in the first place. So, yeah, I'm not too sure. Uh, but at the very bottom here, we've got, there's a label here that just says CPU and 256 kilobyte. So I'm assuming this is a 256 kilobytes of RAM, something like that. And like this is the, the main board for the computer, is my understanding. Uh, I think we've just got like a parallel-ish type port here and whatever that is, maybe a serial port of some sort. And then this right here is actually where the keyboard plugs into. So, yeah. Um, I've seen a few pictures online of different expansion modules, things like the CGA monitor um, expansion module, or uh, things that add different ports, or I believe memory expansion is also done using an expansion card. So, yeah, unfortunately this one is more of a base model, there's really nothing that interesting on here. And then jumping over to the other side of the case, we just have the power supply, uh, which, yeah, it's a very large power supply, so it takes up essentially this entire, uh, almost half of the case here. So all of the cards that were on this side, they basically only go up right to about this point, and then the power supply seems to take out the rest. Um, I guess when we take off the cover, we'll see exactly how large this thing really is. Okay, so disassembly of this thing wasn't too bad. The entire case basically just has four screws on the back, and then the whole cover just kind of slides off the front there. Um, yeah, it's not the greatest, and this, this case is really dirty on the inside because it's been stored for so long. But, as you can see, um, so we do have the power supply that was quite large. Uh, comes out right to about here. And then we've got... Um, very large hard drive or Winchester here and this you can see the cables from the Winchester controller card uh, both of these cables run down in here and over to the hard drive um, I think this is an MFM style hard drive so it's got these two types of cables and then um, yeah they run to the back there uh, it's got a 10M label on here so I'm assuming that means this is a 10 megabyte hard drive and I think at the time, this would have been pretty standard for the like the physical sizing of the hard drive. Um, it's like a... Uh, I don't know if this is like almost a dual height five and a quarter uh, inch drive here. I don't know. But it is, it is a very large drive anyway. And if we look at the floppy disk down here, its cables... Uh, I think these run... Hmm, the floppy drive, I believe, runs down to the bottom board, it looks like, which is the uh, the main board, the like the motherboard. And it might be hard to see, but that motherboard that's in this slot there, it basically runs the entire length of the system. So, yeah, that's a very large module down there. Um, but anyway, I think what we'll do is uh, we'll try taking a closer look at the expansion cards in there. So with all of the modules removed from the system, we can take a look at this uh, backplane piece. Looks like we have pretty much most of the power coming in from the power supply, um, not including the power that would go to the uh, hard drive and disk drive. Um, so we got power coming in here, uh, which would then go to all of our expansion modules here. And this one at the very bottom, which uh, looks like it's the same type of plug used on uh, the Nubus Macintosh computers. Um, yeah, that, that almost looks like the exact same size. Might be the same adapter, who knows? But uh, yeah, the actual main board that was down here um, plugs right into that slot there. So with the main board pulled out of the system, this is actually larger than I thought it would be. Um, not only does it go all the way across um, the entire length of the case, uh, it does also then continue under where the hard drive was sitting. And um, yeah, it's got this uh, pretty interesting plug here. Um, same type that looks like is on a Nubus Macintosh. And let's see. I'm not too sure exactly what components are what on here, but uh, let's take a look at some of the specifics. 
So I think we'll start off with the most important, and that would be this here. This is the AMD 8086, so I'm assuming this is the processor. And the slot right next to it, if I had to guess, I would say this is for a math coprocessor. Um, it seems like the most logical guess there. Uh, moving on to these chips here, I'm going to assume these are the ROM chips. Um, and I notice one has a quadruple zero and the other one here has a zero 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 one. Not too sure what the relevance of that is supposed to be. And over here it actually says CPU slash memory. So I'm not too sure if I had to guess, I'd say a lot of this was maybe memory chips. Um, there, there's a lot of chips on here and I mean, if you were to look up the actual part numbers and all those, we could probably figure out what exactly they are, but I'm assuming a lot of those would be memory chips. Um, but yeah, I've also noticed that it looks like we have two plugs for the disk drives. Uh, when we took this thing apart, the one disk drive that was in here was plugged into this, um, this part here. So, with this one empty and looking like it's the same um, plug, I'm assuming if you did not have a Winchester in the computer, you could actually have a second floppy drive. And while I was glancing at other things on the board, I noticed this little switch down here. Now, this has uh, four little switches on it, and it looks like the position is off, 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 and then on for the fourth one. I'm not too sure if that's some sort of uh, custom configuration type thing. Um, suppose I might be able to find more information in the instruction manual, but uh, for now I don't expect I will be uh, touching that. Um, so yeah. So the first of the expansion boards we're going to look at is the Winchester controller board. Uh, this is what the physical hard drive plugs into. So as we saw when we had the system fully assembled, the Winchester hard drive uses these two plugs here for its uh, data and it's a, it's a very old technology and I don't actually have any other MFM type hard drives so I'm assuming that's uh, what it is, this MFM type controller. So there's not really anything very notable about this board. I noticed there are, I think there's a couple ROM chips there and up there. And they do have these stickers on the top there. This one says 9041R0 and over here it says 9040R5. Uh, yeah, I don't know what that's really supposed to mean, but that's what they are, and you can see these got these little wires that run in uh, some of these places too, so that's kind of interesting. And whatever the rest of these chips do, I have no idea. So the next board we're going to take a look at is the IBM Mono Emulation Board. And unfortunately this original label started to fall off when I was taking the system apart, so I had to put a bit of tape there to hold it in place. So on this board we've got, um, I don't know, a couple of uh, chips over here that might be ROM chips of some sort. Um, yeah, who knows what any of these other ones do, I'm not sure. Uh, this is kind of interesting though, I don't know what this plug here is supposed to be. Uh, there was nothing connected to this um, when this was in the computer. So, yeah, that's interesting. Uh, when I was looking over the manual on that, it said something about the emulator board being tied in with a floppy drive or something like that, but I'm not too sure how that would be the case. The only other thing on here that looks uh, remotely interesting is it actually says PC emulator up at the top here. So, yeah, that's interesting. So we're going to take a closer look at the Winchester slash hard drive. And now that I'm looking at it from this angle, uh, you can tell it actually is just a standard uh, five and a quarter inch um, drive size. Um, it's got this little, I don't know, some piece of plastic with a long screw down there to kind of mount it to the bottom of this piece. Um, from the top, it kind of made it look like this was actually larger uh, than it was, so yeah, this is just a standard five and a quarter inch uh, hard drive that you'd find in, uh, you know, I guess other PCs of the time, um, not a dual height that I was thinking it was. And then, yeah, just the standard plugs over here. So if we take a look at the top, it looks like this is an NEC hard drive. Um, it's got a part number, serial number. Uh, the date on this one appears to be 1986. So this computer, I believe, was uh, originally released in 83. 
So if they were still making these in 86 and the hard drive was uh, like a stock edition or maybe if this was added after the fact, I'm not too sure. So uh, anyway, yeah, it is uh, looks like a 10 megabyte. Um, I don't have any listings on here for bad cylinders or bad whatever. Uh, yeah. All right, so I've got everything reassembled and we're going to hook up the monitor and keyboard. So on the monitor side, um, it's got little symbols on here. There's a plus, and then there's a, uh, I don't know of what that is supposed to be, but it lines up with uh, the symbols on the board here. So uh, this one goes into that spot, and that one over there, and the keyboard. Um, so yeah, this is, uh, it looks like one of those uh, XT or AT connections, but the uh, protocol that it uses might not be the same, so who knows. Uh, let's see. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to apply power to the power supply and uh, see what happens. Actually, just before I get to turning it on, I've got the uh, the back of the monitor here. And we can actually see the date code on this monitor is 1986, which lines up with the date code of the hard disk. So if I had to guess, I would say this entire system was probably manufactured in uh, 86. So yeah, interesting. All right, I've got power plugged in and now I think it's time to turn it on. Uh, I did already try this when I first brought the system home and I think there was some sort of issue with it booting, uh, even though everything seemed to work like the hard drive did spin up, but uh, let's just see what happens now. Oh wow, this is actually making it further than it did before. Uh, I think we've just booted into uh, the Wang system. Um, yeah, this, this is not what happened before. Interesting. Uh, well, well, give me a minute and I'll take a look at the system here. So unfortunately I can't get rid of the uh, this scan thing that's happening. My camera doesn't seem to uh, be able to match up with it in its menu settings. But anyway, let's take a quick look at this system. This is the first time I've actually uh, gotten into this, uh, this computer this far. Um, it's going to ask me for the date. I'm just going to say it's uh, 010188. Um, let's see. If we hit return takes us here, we'll just say it's 11, 11, 11. Um, okay, now it wants us to hit execute, I believe. Um, okay, so this is like some sort of weird custom system. This is a, uh, um, how the, item selected. Okay, so we use the space bar to move, not the arrow keys, which is really weird. Um, what if we, uh, execute the DOS command processor? Ooh, interesting. I think, I think we're in DOS, uh... MS-DOS version 2.01. This is, uh, this is very interesting. Um, might be able to see there's, uh, unfortunately some, like, scratches on here. This, uh, this little panel that's on here, um, this is some sort of, like, uh, I guess it blocks out reflections on the screen. It just happened to be Velcroed to the monitor. Uh, I think it's pretty neat. Um, whoa, that's too much. And I guess that there is the control for the uh, monitor contrast or brightness or whatever, but wow. Um, so we're actually, uh, we're in the hard drive and this is, this is very fascinating. Um, I don't know. No. It's uh, 
How do we, you know? So this DOS is so old that I, I don't know how to make it stop uh, giving me the whole thing at the same time. I don't know if we can. Anyway, uh, what if we type exit? Uh, okay, we're back in the Wang system. Um, printer support, program development, system utilities. Uh, what the hell? My spacebar key doesn't seem to be uh, working all that well. I think the whole thing just needs a cleaning. Okay, if we jump up to uh, applications, um, word processor, convert document, IBM emulation. I want to get down to this one, but this stupid thing. What? Come on. Okay, here we go. I think we're just gonna we're gonna hit it really hard and then execute the IBM emulation. Uh. IBM PC emulation option, uh, monochrome emulator card installed, please insert IBM PC. Ah, okay, so I think when I was reading the manual and it was talking about how it interacts with the floppy drive, I think uh, this program will use the hardware emulation card to read normal DOS software off of the floppy disk, maybe? Um, wow, okay. Uh, I think what we're going to do is uh, I'm going to just uh, stop the video here and see if I actually have a, uh, a DOS game or something on a floppy disk that I can try for this. Alright, so unfortunately when I went to go find a disk that might work, uh, the system would not return back to the menu. Uh, it says something about unable to read uh, stuff off the C drive, but the drive itself, I mean, I can still hear the drive spinning, and um, after I rebooted the computer, it now tells us the Winchester in 05 is defective, and the actual error is a DMA error. Uh, according to the troubleshooting guide, which I have right here, it said this is um, basically data is not flowing properly between the uh, controller card and the Winchester itself. So <clears throat> I think we might be stuck here. Uh, on the keyboard, if I push the help button, it brings up a few options. Um, so like we got R for retry. If we do that, then it just says no auto start device um, because I guess it can't read the partitions off the old Winchester. Um, I tried doing the power up diagnostics, but I think it maybe has to read that off the hard drive, so that really didn't do anything. Um, now here's one, if we do Q for quick restart, um, I think that reloads the computer um, without doing a full power down. Um, so it pops up with the top there, and then it gives us the same, uh, same error there where the Winchester is defective. Um, yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to have to stop the video here and I'm probably going to let the computer sit for a while and see if I can get back into the menu system. Uh, otherwise we might have to unfortunately end early. So I will see how far I get with that. Okay, so after doing like five power cycles and having the computer sit for a while, um, I think I managed to get back into the, uh, the main menu here and so we're going to go back into the IBM emulation uh, option here. Um, okay, so we're going to try uh, this random uh, disk here. This might not work, but it's the oldest software I think I have. So I'm going to uh, put this in the disk drive. And then it says to push execute. Um, Non-system disk or disk out. Oh. Okay, so uh, unfortunately, that uh, hmm. Uh, okay, I think what I'm going to try doing then is maybe try using an, a DOS disk. Uh, let me try that. Okay, so the disk I've got here now is MS DOS 4.0, and it's the shell disk apparently. 
Uh, we're going to put that in the drive. And uh, let's hit enter. Non-system disk. Uh, okay, so now I don't know if this is supposed to do anything or potentially uh, the disk drive um, might need cleaning or something like that. So I'm going to see if I can cancel and get back. Uh, insert IBM PC system disk in drive A. Uh, uh, how do I get out of this? Stop. Oh my god. Um, okay, so I think what we're going to have to do is uh, try to uh, reset the computer, and if I can get back into the Wang menu, we'll probably just take a look at some of the other uh, items in there, uh, just for fun, before we wrap this up. Alright, so the system uh, seemed to make it through uh, another uh, reboot, and uh, let's just take a look at some of these menus. Uh, we were already in the Applications menu, but if we jump in there again, um, we'll see some of these other options, like there's uh, word processing or uh, tutor, um, converting documents to text and whatnot. And there's one here that says system utilities. Uh, if we go into that one, um, we can do a check disk, uh, directory display. Uh, let's just see, uh, directory display. What does that do? Uh, Drive C, uh, page display, uh, execute. Okay, so this basically just gives us a directory listing of the hard drive, so I mean that's pretty basic. Um, so some of these, um, like say for example we've got the msdos.sys, config.sys, uh, menu.com is the Wang menu, I believe. Um, then we've got some other basic ones here like command.com. So um, yeah, basic just basic DOS stuff, and uh, I think we just continue through the listing. Um, some of these uh, might look familiar, like the check disk, uh, format.exe, wang copy, that's interesting. <laughs> uh, yeah, and then miscellaneous DOS things. So, from what I can tell on here, this is basically what you could expect from like a factory uh, wang PC installation. So. Um, we're gonna go back, uh, let's see, I'm, I'm curious about, um, let's just jump up to word processing, uh, we'll execute that. Uh, so this is a, uh, Wang integrated word processing application. Um, let's try to create a new document, execute, uh, document name, it's gonna call it Wang. And uh, hit execute. I can hear the hard drive doing a bunch of stuff. And wow, this is interesting. Okay. Um, oops. Uh, my space bar is barely able to work. The sound from the keyboard is kind of annoying. Um, I'm assuming there's probably some way to disable it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, this is like a very basic Word document or word processing application. And uh, how do I exit? End of edit. Uh, execute. Oh, okay, that's interesting. Um, that's very basic, very basic, uh, yeah. Um, what, oh, I'm still in the word processor. Press shift cancel to exit word processor. Uh, shift cancel? Okay, so we're back. Zap uh, the missed menu and, okay, so now we're at the root again. Um, we're just gonna take a look at, I think, uh, what, let's see, communications. Uh, that's just serial port stuff. That's probably not anything relevant. Um, we were already in the uh, MS-DOS console before. It was uh, DOS 2. Uh, printer support, probably not a really big deal. Uh, come on, program development. Uh, okay, so this thing has uh, 
basic in it, so let's execute that. Um, so yeah, Wang Interpretive Basic, copyright Microsoft 1982. Um, uh, if I remember how basic works, um, run. So it runs, makes high. There's a syntax error because I don't think I have anything that ends the program. Uh, I don't know, it's been 20 years since I've used basic. Uh, fascinating, okay. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Uh, I don't know how to exit. Exit? Syntax error. Thanks. Oh my god. Um... Alright, so I have to reboot the system. We're back in the menu. Uh... I don't think there was anything else we were really going to look at here. Um... Come on. If we go back and do the... Uh program development menu, uh, there was basic, uh, there was uh, editor, which I think this, uh, I think lines up with the edit program in uh, MS-DOS, uh, which is basically just kind of like a, a text editor, uh, I believe. So not really a full word processor like the, uh, the other Wang application, uh, but I think it's basically just uh, an editor for files, so that's nothing really that uh, interesting. Um, how do we get back? Uh, the system utilities, I think we already looked in this one as a submenu from somewhere else. Um, yeah, so this is like uh, check disk, disk format, file copies. Um, if I can move the thing down to advanced utilities. Um, what are these? Interesting. So I think this is some of the actual, uh, like actual system stuff. Um, so we've got, yeah, well, more system utilities. I don't know why that's there again. Right, verify. We got one here that says Winchester Utilities. Um, that is interesting. But I think it'll take forever to get my cursor over there. Uh, ooh, modify system menus. So this looks like more stuff specific to the Wang stuff and not actual DOS, but I don't know. Uh, we're going to escape out of that. Um, what was under other? File. Okay, this looks like if I manually enter the path of something, so we won't do that. Um, yeah, let's see. Yeah, this was the same stuff. Uh, I wonder what, uh, what's Tudor? Do you want to hear the sound effects? <laughs> sure, why not? Wang Tudor, press a key to go on. Uh, my name is Wang. <laughs> Pleased to meet you, Wang. <laughs> Oh, I don't know why I find that so amusing. Um, I'll pause for a few seconds, or you can hit a key. Uh, bunch of text. What is this? Press the next key. So this is kind of like teaching you how to use things like uh, the keyboard, uh, software, PC hardware. Let's try this. Uh, introduction to hardware. Um, execute. Oh, look, it's a little diagram of a computer. Um, tell me more about number six. Oh, that's the keyboard. That's not very interesting. Uh, tell me more about number one. The system unit. All other stuff is connected to it. And Central processing unit CPU or brain of the PC is housed there, and that's number uh, number one there. So that's uh, that's fascinating. Um, what do we do now? This is very strange. So it tells us the brain, and then we have the foot and the eyes, and the vocal cords, and the ears, and the fingers, and the tongue, 
Uh, I'm not sure what it's supposed to be getting at here. Um, oh, and then it changes the words to mean other things, so it like relates to how the body works. Wow, that's fascinating. Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh, what happened? Oh, okay, we're gonna we're gonna exit the Wang Tutor, I think. Um, farewell. Thank you for running the Wang Tutor. Yeah, I don't want to make this video like too long, and uh, yeah, this isn't really my project. It'll be a friend of mine picking this up, so um, I just really wanted to uh, to see how this thing worked for myself and uh, make a uh, brief demonstration video, but. Um, having this thing actually boot up properly, which is not something I expected to happen. Um, I think that made the video a bit longer than I thought, so... Yeah, I think we're going to uh, wrap up the uh, the actual computer demonstration here, and... Uh, yeah, I guess I'll uh, just close out the video with some final thoughts. Something else that I thought was actually pretty interesting is... Uh, if you watch the LEDs on the keyboard here, I'm going to turn the computer on, and uh, it's going to look like it's doing some sort of uh, indication of its self-test or something like that. So yeah, like all of these lights were uh, blinking randomly and stuff like that. Um, I don't know what it's supposed to mean, but uh, it looked pretty interesting to me. So in conclusion, I think the Wang Professional Computer is quite a unique system. I don't think you're going to find a whole lot of examples of this system around these days. When I was uh, poking around on eBay for uh, the system, I found maybe a couple um, that were available with shipping to Canada. So it seems like the kind of system that is probably a little harder to come by. And before I actually picked this one up, I had never actually heard of this particular system before, though I was aware of the Wang company. I'm just not familiar with any of their computers. So getting to do a tour of this system was uh, very interesting. Um, did actually learn a lot about this system. I expected a lot of the uh, computers from these uh, IBM competitors would have actually been a little more compatible than this one. So getting to understand the hardware of this one and uh, I guess kind of why they uh, tried to make it different was actually uh, quite interesting. Um, yeah, but uh, it is unfortunately a, a very large system and when I picked it up I already knew that I wasn't going to be keeping it in my collection because I have a very limited living space, so uh, something like this where you need to have all the matching components uh, it's it takes up too much room and like I have a very small desk here for actually working on these systems It just doesn't fit so I only did pick it up so I could hang on to it for a friend of mine who's gonna pick it up at some point um, But yeah, it's uh, it's definitely a neat system, and I'm glad I uh, took the opportunity to uh, opportunity to play around with it um, I wasn't uh, expecting to get anywhere with it the first time I powered it on I did encounter that uh, defective Winchester error and that's pretty much where my interest stopped, because I wasn't going to take this on as a project. It'll be uh, someone else's project to, uh, to play around and uh, repair this thing. But, as you can see here, I do have the basically the whole system. And it did also come with a selection of all the manuals that uh, I think the system came with. Uh, we have manuals that talk about the basic programming language. Uh, the Wang inst the installation instructions, uh, troubleshooting guide. I actually looked at this when I was trying to figure out um, what was happening with that Winchester controller error, and it was telling me something about the DMA and the controller and uh, who knows what. And then we have things like uh, this one here, the IBM PC emulation option. So this talks about um, that card that I guess allows this thing to run the traditional DOS applications, which unless they were written specifically for the Wang, they need that emulation card in order to actually execute. So learning that was interesting. That's not something I expected from these types of computers, but yeah. So anyway, um, I think that pretty much wraps up this. Uh, 
I don't think I have anything else to say about this computer. Um, yeah, if you're looking for one of these things, I'd probably recommend checking out eBay, or if you manage to get lucky like I did, finding one in local classifieds. And if you are picking up one of these systems, keep in mind you will need to have all of the accessories, otherwise you're not going to really get anywhere with it. Anyway, thank you for watching.